Now, here we go. Another week comes to an end. Would you believe it? I say it every week. <laughs> it's not that big of a shock. Okay, what are we doing? We're talking about my story part five. It says it up there, that's why it's my big plan for YouTube content. Big plan it entails a couple of lines every week being with some thoughts and ideas but what's come up and uh, what might be interesting to the lovely people who take time out of their day to listen to my thoughts. So, inbox is down to just the one, just wonderful. Let me pull up the calendar. Let me see where I'm at with things. Uh, this is week 12, interesting. Why is that interesting? Um. Wasn't 12 weeks, it was actually 13 weeks in the first quarter. Okay, so penultimate week of Q1. I wonder if I'd asked myself coming into the last week of Q1 where I'd like to be, what I would have said. Did I do that? I've got my win the week here. How are we getting on? Well, confirmed new client has not happened yet. I suspect it will happen today, which is exciting. Two discovery sessions done. Uh, content, which I mean LinkedIn and YouTube done after this video. And then starring and working on ICP. Oh yeah, so I talked about Pipeline yesterday. Ironically, it was along the same, I had the session with the client and then uh, ultimately, I sat there yesterday evening and thought, you know, really where, where are my next five clients coming from? So where are my next five clients coming from? I'm going to write this down because it's something I want to do or need to remind myself about. So where are the next five clients coming from? And I thought it was pretty compelling or at least helped focus my attention because, uh, Five clients to me is actually quite a lot. Um, but equally, it's not that much in terms of, an, I mean, it's not a very big number. And they probably already are in my network. What I mean by that is they're probably already on my LinkedIn. So back into LinkedIn, the focus of my, the, my focus for the next seven weeks. So if you can be right up to week 20 in the year, all in on on LinkedIn in the sense of I know my clients are there, they see my content or they want them to see my content. Let's get get their eyes fixated on it. So that is the that is the big focus for me in the next few weeks. Um, I just I have something that will still function on the side, which is getting more people onto LinkedIn. But I'm quietly confident the next five clients are already connected with me on LinkedIn. So. And that excludes referrals, I should say. So if I get a referral for someone that I'm not connected with, fantastic. Non-referral new business, I reckon they're on LinkedIn and connected with me already. So anyway, that was the thought. I've got my, I, this is a very random note. I really prefer like a nice short Americano. Like I don't like a lot of water in a coffee, but then the last couple of days, you've probably seen it but longer black coffees are now all the rage. So, um, anyway, not much else to talk about this week. Things are in a good place. I've got complete clarity on what's important to me and the business. And yeah, it's gonna go and enjoy a couple of days of the wedding after this video. So anyway, for all that, part five of, I think, this is the penultimate part of my story. What I might do actually is pull all the videos together that are from or include parts of my story. And I might even, I might even edit videos and bring it all together, but we'll see. So <clears throat> part five took us up to the end of 2019, end of 2019. So this is 
I've been with the agency at this point just under two years and things are going really well for me personally and for the business. And now this next part of the story is really about the, the official shift from account director or whatever, account overseer, account client services head, whatever, whatever it was, um, to MD, and then ultimately I'm going to take my take this right up to the day where I decided, or the around the time I decided that it was the right time for me to move on, and then part six will be talking about that, which will bring me up to pretty much flex ops. So 2020 begins. For what it's worth, I mean there were rumblings of this COVID thing. Uh, in China at this point. I don't know where, I'm not going to talk specifically about COVID for 20 minutes or something, but it's just interesting to me how life goes on a lot of the time while these other things are happening elsewhere in the world. And very rarely, if ever, do they actually impact you. This one impacted everyone, obviously. But uh, January 2020 began, and from memory it was, you know, we were gearing up for a big year. What really happened in the next three to four months was a sequence of events that went something like fear, concern, and then I'm talking about ad spend here. We're not talking about, well, the bigger picture thing, which is people's lives, but um, in relation to influencer ad spend, it went fear, uh, panic, quiet, <laughs> and then excitement, and then it just went crazy. And I'll take you through each of these points. So fear sets in, complete uncertainty for businesses, e-commerce brands, online companies. Nobody knows what's happening. Uh, supply chain issues become a real thing. Um, all sorts of problems. Then panic ensues. So we have a lot of clients that pull spend or try to pull spend in the midst of uncertainty. And then within probably a matter of weeks, there's this lull period, right? So the initial people that were pulling out spend had done it. The people that were thinking about it hadn't really done anything. So they'd made no decision. And then the people that were still going to keep spending, kept spending. What then started to happen was the e-commerce businesses realized that, wait a minute, this is actually, this is going well because people had money, but they, they couldn't spend it outside basically. So they spent it all online. So e-commerce brands started booming. And in probably the space of, it was around summer 2020, maybe a bit before that, I, I remember logging on and almost every morning there'd be a message along the lines of, hey Ross, brand X wants to increase spend two, three times what they said. And you might think for an agency that that's fantastic, but I'll be really honest, in reflection, for some, for some clients it was, for many it wasn't, because it just lured us into a false sense of security. These are inflated figures. We now know why. We now know that for most brands, they were probably the, the, the nail in the coffin. Um, brands were spending based on performance drain and anomaly and that's very dangerous to do obviously so yeah you would have these scenarios where brands that you know we probably wouldn't spend more than 20k a month with we're now spending trying to spend because of 100k which is crazy so i mean it, it sent the agency it sent our business into you know we were off to the moon basically um we went into the pandemic with about 18 or 19 people we came out of it with 40 um, all of which were hired remotely. My role during this time specifically shifted from that of someone that oversees all the client work and works with the rest of the business and supports the founder to, I mean, during this time I was made MD and became the person that operated and oversaw the whole company. And if I'm being honest, it was probably the period where it was a period where I learned the most, but it also hurt, the, hurt the most because it was just, it was very intense. And 
I think a lot of the things that I take now and try to help people with come from this period because we experienced exponential growth. We experienced a couple of fantastic years numbers wise, but it was all inflated. It was all like a, you know, it was, it was a consequence, as I said earlier, it was a consequence of an anomaly in that these brands were spending money they probably shouldn't have been spending and inflated our numbers and inflated the influencer economy and creator economy in general. And overall, it just kind of, it painted a bit of a false picture of how your business was really doing and what was actually happening in the world. And it all had to come crashing down at some point, which we'll get to. But during this time, anyhow, from my perspective, I was able to, yeah, it was fantastic in terms of responsibility, really enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, I think we implemented a lot of great things at the business, but equally, knowing what I know now, growing the business in terms of, well, well essentially increasing the business by 100% during a period like this was, you know, risky. Um, and it was probably done in a way that didn't set us up for success, which is easy to say in hindsight, but there you go. What would I have done differently then? Certainly would have taken the mindset to hire sl more slowly, uh, more cautiously, be much more clear on terms of who we're trying to hire and, and why. I think a lot of the hires were made on the side of the business that I wasn't directly involved in. And I suppose, they were largely execution roles, so people doing a specific task, which on paper made a lot of sense, but in reality, you still need someone quite competent and skilled to do these things. And I think we hired in some people that probably wanted the job because of what it entailed, they got to work with influencers, um, as opposed to maybe being really skilled at the things required to do that job really well. And also, I we just didn't really know, I, well, I don't feel like we knew who the right type of person for our business was. And we didn't really take control of the culture. What I mean by that is the culture grew from the people we hired, as opposed to it being a culture that was ingrained in the business from the early people that were hired or the leaders of the business. And I think we ended up unfortunately in a scenario where you would get, I mean, I know from the feedback that people were very happy working at Centus because of their colleagues, but there were other issues. And unfortunately, I think if we'd had a closer pulse on the culture, I think it would have made it, we would have hired differently. Um, but yeah, it's all hypothetical. The, I suppose beyond that, Client-wise, specifically, definitely could have done with letting go of some clients that were basically distractions. So what I mean by that is, you had a lot of these e-commerce brands that started working with us. <clears throat> um, a lot of these people that started working with us would not be ICP. And there was maybe 10, 15, 20 of them at one point, truthfully, that really weighed us down. And distraction means you had great people who were like an account manager or a campaign manager or a campaign exec that spent a lot of time with these non-ICP accounts. Um, so again, it's, it's probably why one of the big things I always speak with agency owners about and work with them on is their positioning, which is something I talked about yesterday. So yeah, um, where am I going with this? Ge generally, if you, if you look at the period from middle of COVID to coming out of COVID, things were pretty steady revenue-wise. We established ourselves in the space. We've got a decent sized team. I think more often than not, people are doing good work. It's when we start to come out of COVID where the cracks appear as a consequence of that, this like almost false growth that I've talked about. And, um, yeah, we just had too many people, too many people in roles that were, you know, required relatively, I think probably the phrase I'd use is, I mean, it was incredibly repetitive. So we had a lot of people doing incredibly repetitive tasks as part of a conveyor belt, which was creating campaigns and getting them live. That was a circular, a cyclical event, which happened every month. 
about two three quarters of the business were in roles like that the people that weren't in roles like that i think you know generally we're doing okay um but myself felt i and myself felt that we i suppose got away with things a little bit and i got away with things a little bit in the sense that i hadn't been strong enough in terms of putting processes in place off the back of covid because we had an opportunity then we'd be, we'd, we'd been in a certain team size for a while and we had got things to a point where yeah i you know honestly i think if i'd been tighter in a certain couple of places a couple of places or two we had the opportunity to just make sure we were doing things really well for clients in a certain way and i think in certain parts of the business that happened like there were, again for the most part people did great work um unfortunately what just really happened was some of the clients stopped spending money and that happened to all advertising agencies and as a consequence of that um brands pulling spend off the back of covid due to issues that are outside of their control the revenue starts to decline and then you have this scenario where yeah we need some people to uh, step up or we need to look at how we're structuring the business and then that brought about changes in the business that were tough um obviously for people specifically but also in a general sense and you know what i would say also learned during this period we're now on to about 2022 23 which is like i think as someone in my role of md you have to be very mindful of you know you're steering the ship so if you aren't entirely sure yourself and where you're taking it it's gonna be very difficult for everyone else to know and without that clarity that you give yourself your decision making is going to be slower <clears throat> and i think our ability to make decisions decreased during that time um it's quite it's not easy but if if your revenue is only going like that you don't maybe have to make as many decisions or it feels like you can kind of just coast but when the revenue starts to go like that, you're in a place where you have to make decisions and quickly. And if you don't have things set up internally to do that, or aren't in a place to do it yourself, then yeah, it's going to be tough. Um, but anyway, these are just general ramblings and thoughts, I suppose. I think if I go right up to the period at the end of 2022, it was very clear we, we had a couple of things were going against this so outside of our control things going against this brands were pulling spend outside of our control we'd already lost clients for reasons that were beyond our own work um outside of our control the creator costs were going up and outside of our control general world events meant that there were lots of things working against our clients what's in our control is the quality of our service who we work with and what we're doing for them I don't think we focused on those things enough or I didn't drive forward enough of those things at a personal level as well or focus enough attention on them. And it really did get to the point at the end of 2022 where it felt like, yeah, I mean, as many businesses did, we had to trim down the size of the team again, which was tough. Um, and that happened in early 2023. Again, it's horrendous. If you've ever been part of a redundancy process or any kind of um, scenario where you let go of people, it's it's horrific um equally it's going to happen like you cannot you cannot you will not have a world where this will not happen every 5 10 15 years i don't believe so when it does happen all you can do is do it to the best of your ability and i believe we did that but it doesn't mean people are happy about it so where does it leave things i mean it meant the business was trimmed down to a size that was probably manageable um but equally it was still a very tough period for trying to get new clients in the door as an example um but my role in that was you know i was pretty much the one that was heading up all that i think it was a good experience so to speak um but it was a tough time whenever you're heading up a company that now is not growing it's actually going the opposite direction funnily enough again it's those experiences or it's those learnings that I lean on the most whenever I now work with people 
because the, that's the stuff that's really important, right? So people management, hiring processes and structures, working with the right clients, managing your pipeline, these things are probably all things that could have been done better by me at certain points or by our people at the previous agency. And they are now things that I focus my time and attention on a lot with people. So as of anything in life, if you take anything from this segment of my story, it's that a lot of the learnings come from the, the challenges you face or I faced, as opposed to the, the wins or the, the big, big highlight reading moments we had over the last five years. But um, anyway, this has been very long. There, there's probably, as I talk through this, I kind of just, I mean, I did it in one take, but I'll be really honest, I think this is probably one of the first videos I've done where maybe one take wasn't the best for all that. I don't know. But anyway, these are just ramblings, just thoughts. That's really my story, so to speak, up until we're now early 2023. I very soon reached the conclusion that it's time for me to move on and do something else, which becomes flex op, flex ops. And we'll get into that next time around, whenever that is, probably next week. So, anyway, that's it. Need to get my head down, finish the week now, and then enjoy the weekend. Speak next week.